Hey guys, welcome to the cut portion of our program. So you've already reverse dieted, you've learned how to weigh your food, you've learned how to track your food efficiently, you've learned how to uh, meal prep, you've learned to prioritize your protein, and now, because you did all those things so well, now is the time when we can pull back on the calories and see that scale drop. So here's what you have to do. This is your guideline, so make sure you watch the video all the way to the end because this is what's going to make your cut successful. So number one is that pre-planning, pre-prepping, right? On a cut, you cannot go out and run errands and not have that snack packed or have not left the house making sure that you can go from meal one to meal two without feeling cray cray in the middle, okay? So I generally work things around my schedule, around my home in such a way that makes it so that I have eaten before I left and I'm not gonna wanna eat while I'm out. If I do want something while I'm out, that is the perfect time for a energy drink, diet soda. Of course, this is a zero sugar. Okay. We're not doing like calorie drinks, but that is your chance to have like a diet soda. Get that like warm fuzzy in your mouth. It feels sweet. It's going to stay you over until you get to your meal. So now what is the second thing you need to focus on? The second thing you need to focus on a cut is not worrying about the scale just like we did when you were in the reverse. It's still going to go up and down just like it did in the reverse. A lot of times clients don't lose on the way down, they'll lose when we start reversing back up. You won't know which type of person you are until we start this process. So do not get frustrated as we drop the first week two, week three, week four, if the scale isn't diving down. That just means your body is wondering what you're up to. So you just have to be patient. That's when you have to trust the process, be patient, and just, it will come. It's just gonna come in your own body's time. So that's staying focused, staying on the numbers, not paying attention to the scale, and pre-prepping so far. So what else makes a cut successful? Water, tons of water. Water and good sleep is what will allow your body to recharge, flush out the toxins, and start to begin to like that weight loss process better, okay? There isn't a lot of things you can do that's more important than sleep and water. So yes, have your energy drink, have your diet soda, but guys, you got to make sure you are drinking water like all day long. Not only does that hydrate your body and keep your body healthy, but it also keeps something in your tummy and keeps you from being hungry all the time. All right, what's the next thing you need to do? High volume foods. What does high volume foods mean? It means we're back to the giant salads, right? Still putting that four to five ounces of protein on top, but this ginormous bowl of salad so that you can just fill your tummy with lots of extras, right? Things that don't have a lot of calories. Um, you wanna to top that with Greek yogurt with like ranch dressing mixed in, um, the ranch powder dressing, sorry, and kind of making a giant salad, okay? And then put one or two little treaty things on top so that you still want to eat the salad. <laughs> um, do you want to kind of keep your carbs low at those kind of meals? And you want to make sure that you're using your carbs, especially if you're a gym goer, around your workout. So why do you want to plan your carbs on either side of your workout? Because basically, you guys, if you do not eat sugar carbs before you go to the gym, it's going to eat your lean muscle and not the fat that we want it to eat. So it's going to prioritize burning your muscle rather than the stored fat, okay? So it's hugely important if you're going to the gym that you feed before and immediately following the gym, okay? 20 grams of protein here, 20 grams of protein here, okay? Carbohydrates here and carbohydrates there. So you can see breakfast and dinner are gonna have to be really lean on the carbs, almost none. 
So what does your breakfast look like? You wanna do a lot of egg substitute, egg whites, having egg white omelets, making the waffle chaffle type things that you can do with making a breakfast sandwich where both patties are eggs and then you've got your meat and cheese, of course, to make like a breakfast sandwich. Dinners, you wanna keep those high protein. You wanna have your chicken with a side of broccoli or mixed vegetables or stir fry or things like that, okay? But around your workout, that's where the carbs should be going. Always include one small little like snacky thing during the day because you know you're gonna get hungry at some point during the day. So when you are doing super low calorie, Obviously, you're working with so little. You really have to think when you're at the grocery store, is this a time when I'm cutting? I'm going to have to make sure I buy a lot of low-carb, low-calorie, low-fat snacks. Okay? So, focusing on that. Other than that, what else can you do to make the cut successful? Maybe the most important thing here is never to be inconsistent. If you are not ready to be consistent for the next 12 weeks, you are not ready to be in a cut and you need to message me right now, okay? If you have a vacation coming, this is not the time to cut. If you have girls weekend coming, this is not the time to cut, unless you can be perfect. If you are not perfect and you are not consistent almost 98% of the time on the cut, your body is looking for extra food. If you feed it extra food, it thinks, well, she did that last Tuesday, maybe she's going to do it Thursday. So it will burn less fat, won't really let you lose weight because it thinks you're going to feed it. It's almost like a toddler, like throwing temper tantrums every time until they get something, right? The more times you give that child the thing they were after when they're throwing a temper tantrum, the more they're gonna use the temper tantrum to get that item. It's the same way with your body. It is throwing a tantrum by telling you, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, or, ooh, that looks good, ooh, that looks good, and it's craving all those processed sugars that you've cut out. If you fall prey to giving your body those items during the cut, it will not move. And now you've wasted a whole bunch of time. So it's better to know if you're in that mindset where you can really nail it. And if you're not in that mindset, it's not a failure. We stay at maintenance until you're like, yeah, I'm totally ready. And then we go for it. It's much better to go into the cut prepared than it is to try to go in a cut not prepared and not mentally prepared. And that's it, you guys. That is the cut. That is what you need to do. It's incredibly simple if you just stay consistent on the food, you pre-plan, you do not leave your house without being fed first, you don't go to restaurants and sit and be hungry with your family, you make sure you bring your own food or you ate right before they go, and you always keep yourself at a point of satiety, right? You wanna just stay satisfied all the time. You don't want points of hunger and you don't want points of full because then that means you won't have enough food for later or you're gonna eat something you weren't supposed to. So it's very simple, just stay on the numbers. Of course, if you have questions, you guys know you can always message me or you certainly can always message the chat group. There's a lot of people that have done this process many times. They're gonna tell you about sugar-free jello. They're gonna tell you about all the sweet things that you can have that are really, really low calorie and get you through those humps. So let's go, let's get fired up. Let's start the weight loss and dream and think about all those possibilities that are headed your way. All right.